Hi everyone and welcome to the return of our survival series. In this episode we're going to go through the process of actually placing an object from our build menu into the world. So we're looking at how we can trace it into the world and snap it to a grid-like system. So let's take a look at how this is achieved. So last time we were here we started work on our build menu. So what we can do is make it so that when we click on the build option we are going to be able to choose where to place something. So at the moment, if we go to our build menu slot, we are clicking on the item, spawning the actor in, and then immediately placing it. We don't want to do this just yet. So let's disconnect this and hit compile and save that. But what we do want to do is return the spawned actor here to a controller so we can maneuver it around and place it where we want to place it. So let's do that. So first of all, we need to get our controller. So let's go to our controller. And go here. And in here, we can have a variable for the building piece. Okay. Build piece. And I'm going to set that to a build piece base object reference hit compile and save that now i'm just going to tap that there and go back to that slot so in here we're going to get the player controller and then cast that to our particular player controller that is so we can get access to the variable in there of doing set build piece. We have to plug the build piece in from the return value. Okay, let's now delete that place object. So that's going to go across over to our player controller. So let's go back over to there. And what we want to do is change the positioning of this uh, whenever the build piece here is valid. So that'd be on a tick here. And on the tick, we're going to drag out our build piece and you're going to right click, convert that to validated get. This is because we don't want to bother ticking if the piece is not valid. If we don't have any piece in our hand, there's no need to worry about it. But if it is valid, we want it to carry on and we're going to move it around. So we want to move it based upon where our character is looking. So we're going to get the player camera manager and we want to get their location as well as their forward vector and the forward vector is the direction our camera is facing so we're going to multiply that by range this is the max distance that you can place an item in so let's convert that over to a float and we'll put it in as, uh, let's say, 600. And then we're going to add these two together. And now we can do a line trace. So let's do line trace by channel. And we'll do is valid into our line trace. Now the start location will be our camera's location here. And the end location will be this bit, but we're going to snap it to a grid with vector snap to grid because uh, we want to choose where we want to place this thing in like a grid sort of format so i'm going to change it to 100 and that's the size of your grid and then we'll put that into the end here and for testing purposes we're going to draw a debug here for one frame goes on tick it'll tick and just show it live compile save that okay Next, we've got to take that build piece and attach it to whatever our line trace is hitting. So we're going to take our out hit, break that open. And we want to drag out our build piece and set location. Of the actor, and it'd be either one of two locations. It will be the, uh, the location here. Or it'd be trace end. So if we look, just look it up in the sky, it'll just hover in the sky. 
Okay, so new location here is going to be either one of these, and for that we're going to do select vector, and the condition we pick A here will be whether or not it was a blocking hit. So it's a blocking hit, and it's true, it'll pick A, that's the location. If it weren't a blocking hit, it'll pick B, which will be the trace end, which will go there, and we'll put that in here. Hit compile and save that. So let's test this out. So let's first of all get our materials that we need. There's the stone, and there's the wood. And I'm going to go build by pit. And a problem we've got here is our object that we spawned in has collision on it, so therefore I can't move. So let's make it so we don't have collision on it when it first comes in. So for that, we're going to go to the build piece, the like, parent class of it. So let's go to the building pieces in building system, build piece space. And on begin play, where we're changing the preview model, we also want to change the collision. So we do here, set collision enabled to no collision. Okay, let's try this again. Should be enough. Okay. So go back to our build, fire pit. And now I can move my mouse around and you can see our fire pit is choosing where to go. Now, as I said, if I hover up in the air, it's going to still pick that trace end rather than the location it's hitting so we're going to make it go around like this um and we're going to make it so it has to check a condition for when it can be on the floor okay now this is going to be a bit special because some pieces may not be able to go on the floor they may only be in the air like made of like wall like torches and things like that which will place on a wall so we'll be making a system where the actor itself will be able to look for and check whether it's a, a correct condition for its placement so yeah we'll take that into the next episode so there you have it we can now place objects or at least position objects in our world next up we're going to be able to actually place them in our world and alongside doing that, we'll do some checks to work out whether or not we can actually uh, have a valid location for that object before we actually do place it. So if you can watch the next episode right now, you'll find it over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. We can find that video plus many others all before anyone else from just $1 a month. Thank you so much to all the patrons and YouTube members for the continued support in the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.